Last month, I found this 2013 Nexus 7 Wi-Fi edition being used as a dust collector for years. And right about when I tried to sell it cheaply, I found people on Reddit saying it is supported by several Linux distributions. Finally, an excuse to keep something after my girlfriend's here. After several weeks of struggling, have I regretted my decision to keep it? Let's find out. There are several Linux distributions available for mobile devices nowadays. The most popular ones being Pure OS from Purism and Selfish from Jola. But neither of them supports a wide range of devices. I ended up using two other distributions, Ubuntu Touch and Postmarket OS, aka PMOS. Let's start with the installation. Ubuntu Touch is maintained by a nonprofit called UB Ports. They provide a dedicated desktop installer application for all the modern operating systems. On Nexus 7 tablet, the experience couldn't be smoother. All I did was to put the device into fastboot mode, connect my device, start this application, and follow the instruction. I was able to boot into the system within 7 minutes without doing anything. As for the post-market OS, I followed the official wiki for Nexus 7. It kept failing with the error saying not able to mount the root partition. This happens when I install the root FS to the user data partition due to the system size is not big enough, which I think might be the root cause. I couldn't get it to boot properly no matter which UI I chose. Then I found that PMOS can also be installed through ADB sideload, so I flashed the TWRP recovery and tried again. There is some progress this time. I can see it going into the system right after the installation. But unfortunately, the first time boot up is also the last time. The system will throw another error saying cannot mount boot partition if I turn it off and on again. I assume it is because I installed the system onto the data partition, but I don't have any alternative because when I flash it without specifying the data partition, the installation just failed. There is another issue with my Nexus 7. If I install the phone UI comes with a tiny DM, be it Glacier, Fosh, or Plasma Mobile, the system will boot into the TTY1 terminal without any on-screen keyboard support. I have no idea how to proceed. I can't hook up the internet, set up SSH, or even log in. I also tried adding TinyDM as an extra package when running the init command without any success. I don't know if there is any micro USB keyboard out there that will work. I bet there is, given that this is the proper Linux kernel version 5. But even so, I'm debating with myself if it is worth it for the 9 year old tablet. At this point, I decided to leave my Nexus 7 with Ubuntu Touch and commandeer my girlfriend's old OnePlus 6 for PMOS. See? It is not all bad waving goodbye to my bachelor life. At least OnePlus 6 is officially supported by the Postmarket's OS community, way above Nexus 7, which is, by the way, the first tablet to run PMOS. But initially, I wanted to start with Ubuntu Touch on the phone so that I can compare it to the tablet. Oh boy, was I in for a treat. The installer just wouldn't work. First, it doesn't recognize the phone as a OnePlus 6. I know that it was bought in China, that it might be different than the international versions developers have. So I deliberately installed the international stock ROM on it. Still not working. Fine, at least I can manually select the model inside the installer. But then the installation won't boot into the recovery after doing its work in fastboot. No worries, I can still manually boot into the recovery using the physical buttons. And that is where I failed because it just stuck at the boot screen without going into the recovery. It doesn't matter if the previous recovery was the stock OnePlus or TWRP. Neither works. With a heavy heart, I opened up the PMOS wiki for OnePlus 6. I thought if Ubuntu Touch was this bad already, should I even bother with PMOS? It turned out I was wrong again. It couldn't be easier to have it installed on OnePlus. I was able to run Fush UI on the phone using these three simple commands with the pre-built binary. Now, let's look at some different features between these two distributions. For starters, 
Managing applications is quite easy in Ubuntu Touch. There is an open store inside. It is easy to search, install, and remove applications. A lot of them are web-based instead of native, but it still gives more similar experience like a mobile device. For example, I installed the YouTube web app from the store. Of course, it doesn't support Chromecast, but at least I can play YouTube videos just like how I do it on a smartphone. The downside is that there is only one native web browser called Morph Browser, even though you can still use Firefox inside the Libertin container, which is provided as a way to run Linux desktop application. It is super laggy, and the UI needs customizations with the Libertin tweaking tool. I personally find it super hard to use on this old device because there is no wiping for scrolling and the scroll bar is super small if not tweaked. What about PMOS? Although there is a software store, I can't find anything inside. All the sections are empty. I have to resort to APK command in terminal to manage the applications. However, I think because PMOS is based on Alpine Linux, there are more native applications available. I thought it was pronounced Alpine, but then the Formula team told everyone it's called Alpine, so I don't really know which one is correct anymore. I could use Firefox and Chromium along with anything available in the distribution. The upside is that everything is snappy and usable. The downside is that when it comes to YouTube, I have to use the browser and the videos do not fit the window as nicely in a web-based application. I know I can create web apps by using GNOME web browser, but it is just another setup for the users. There's more. For Ubuntu Touch, it seems the fastboot tool stopped picking up the device after the installation. Also, the ADB is not working even when the developer mode is turned on. I searched the internet and it seems that people suggest me using USB 2 instead of 3, which I don't have. Without that working, it seems that I'm stuck with this system for now. While on PMOS for OnePlus 6, the phone won't charge while it's powered on. The wiki says to put it in the EDL mode for charging, which is quite tricky to get in. I only managed to get in once for the past week. In other time, I have to power it off or use fastboot mode. There are several other things I found quite challenging to use. Like I can't seem to use the enable GPS service inside any navigation app in either of these systems. And the Chinese characters won't display properly on PMOS even after installing the Alpine fonts. But because the rabbit hole goes very deep, I think I'll stop here. So, did I revive my Nexus 7? In a way, yes. Now I'm able to use a properly up-to-date system. I'm less worrying about the security holes when connecting it to my Wi-Fi than when I was using a 2015 Android system. And my original use case for this device was to read books, which is still being fulfilled. On top of that, I can also enjoy some Linux experience on a mobile device. In the end, I want to say, Linux on mobile is definitely not for everyone. I would say it is not even ready for most of the Linux desktop users as a daily driver, unless you have extra time, device, or the money to buy the stock Linux phones. It takes too much effort to install with too little feature working. I see both Ubuntu Touch and PMOS can utilize Mbox to install Android apps but there are only a handful of devices that can do so with Ubuntu, and I doubt the performance will be as smooth compared to a proper Android OS. So that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.